uh, today there's a global uh, celebration going on uh, to mark uh, the World Tobacco Day. Uh, of course, the day is set aside to reduce uh, tobacco use around the world. Ghana is participating in these uh, celebrations as, and has uh, been, as has been done all over uh, the years. Now, uh, it's on the theme that we need uh, food, not tobacco. And uh, it is a source of uh, uh, some number of issues and a series of uh, illnesses uh, for many, including lung cancer, heart diseases, stroke, and a lot of respiratory diseases as well. A study uh, conducted by the NGO Vision for Alternative Development uh, indicates that as many as 804,000 Ghanaians smoke uh, cigarettes every day in 2015. Executive Director for uh, that association and the National Coordinator for the Ghana uh, Non-Communicable Diseases Alliance, Abraham Musa, uh, will be joining us uh, shortly. But just uh, take a listen to some, some of the views on, on the streets of Accra about this whole issue uh, relating to the use of tobacco. Escalate. That's why I'm saying that you see the right for the box that is, uh, smokers die young. So as for me, they should ban uh, cigarettes. I know plenty of people, they smoke cigarettes, but as for me, it's not good, so they should ban. I think people shouldn't allow to smoke publicly. Because uh, those who heal also are also affected. It's not good. It's not good for our health. Uh, Why not? Uh, because even it is written on the, the, the cigarette box that it can cause harm to your health. So I would advise my colleagues out there not to uh, engage themselves in it. Uh, okay. Okay. Some views there on the uh, issue of tobacco use. But as we celebrate the day, uh, obviously the theme is that we need food, not tobacco. Abraham Musa is here with us. Uh, thank you, sir, for your time. Well, uh, the theme itself speaks volumes. Uh, but many will say tobacco is addictive. So those who are using it, may not see the essence of exactly what you're talking about. Well, uh, it's not entirely true, but let me, let me, let me greet your, your, your listeners right. and, um, or your viewers as well. Mm -hmm. And um, in fact, I, I must say I agree with the, the guy who was speaking. I mean, um, the point is this. There are many advocates who have advocated for that uh, a product that has no benefit. Yeah. I mean, whatsoever, whichever way you look at it, I mean, it should be banned. I mean, entirely from the world. But unfortunately, that has not been the case uh, because uh, many are citing issues of you know, smuggling and the fact that once something is banned, control is very difficult. So we need to put measures to ensure that people willingly you know, are able to stop. You know, the, so the, the point is that the issue of the, the nicotine, you know, the, the industry themselves, I mean, the, the manufacturer themselves knows that that is the, the evil, the in thing within the tobacco products. So they, after producing the product, they, they then inject you know, the nicotine inside just so people wow. are unable to stop smoking. Because they know that once there's nicotine, then once you smoke, then you are hooked to it. So and so and that is that is the, the notion. So once nicotine is reduced or is taken from tobacco, the tobacco product itself, then automatically you have people, you know, I mean, I mean, having their, their way through without having to smoke. So every every you know every manufacturer finds a way, you know, to inject, you know, or mix mix the product more appealing to people. But I've not, I mean, tried smoking, or I'm, I'm not a chain smoker, so I'm not able to tell the ingredients and how the feeling will be. But without nicotine, what is research telling us well, so, about, uh, about, you know, that, that feeling of it when you don't have that element in it? Well, so, um, you know, um, tobacco contains about 7,000 chemicals, you know, 7,000, I mean, you know, and um, most of them, about 50, 59% of them are cancer-causing cancer agents. So for us as civil society organizers or advocates, mm -hmm. or even public health advocates, uh, we don't seem to recognize the, you know, the, 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 any benefit that was so that there is when it comes to mm -hmm. tobacco. But of course, people who smoke will tell you that, you know, it gives them some kind of feeling, some okay. kind of appetizer, you know. But of course, um, all of these are just, I mean, worldly things, you know, that, and of course, nobody will willingly go and smoke. People who smoke will tell you that uh, it is as a result of either peer pressure or results of some activities of the, of the tobacco industry, like advertisement, mm. you know, um, the cost of the product, which is very cheap in the market, and the availability. So it makes people, you know, easy to assess it. And once you see your stars, you know, I mean, movie actors, you know, singers, then people tend to emulate, you know, that kind of behavior. And the industry have used, um, you know, and used that to actually ride on and getting more of the youth to, to smoke. 
So, so what sort of reforms uh, are we on the lookout for now? And by extension, your group, your alliance, what would you want to see in terms of the concrete changes? Right. You know, I was just a few, a few months ago um, talking about the fact that one of the measures that um, government all over the world are putting in place has to do with, you know, taxing this unhealthy commodity, especially tobacco products. And indeed, I'm, I'm happy that at least uh, Parliament was able to pass the excise duty I mean, the bill. So currently we are going to see some, you know, I mean, level of rise in terms of taxation, you know, on tobacco products, which means the product is going to be a bit high, which, you know, prevent the poor, young people and children from getting access. And then also, you know, today's World of Tobacco Day, we are raising awareness. We are calling on government to as much as they can, I mean, government all over the world, as much as they can to, you know, to activate the sections of the Female Convention Tobacco Control, the WHO Female Convention Control, that actually, you know, specify or giving direction to many governments on how they should, you know, try to support farmers. And in that directive, are we losing sight of some key factors? No, in fact, I must say that in Ghana, we have made some progress, okay. but the progress, I mean, uh, stands from the fact that, you know, we don't grow tobacco in a country anymore since 2006. 1996, we stopped growing tobacco. So that have made you know, the, the, the growers you know, to reduce. So, but as of 2015, we're having about um, 500, almost about 600 farmers, growers in the country. Unfortunately, however, government and all of us, we've not prioritized the alternative livelihood stuff where we want to see how we can support farmers to shift from the growing of, you know, I mean, this product like tobacco, which has no benefit, as I mentioned to you earlier, to the growing of, you know, other sustainable, you know, food crops that will sustain us and sustain the economy. I can tell you that so much hectares of, of land, I mean, is used for the production of, of tobacco products. If you're able to channel all this land to the production of good food, I don't think we will have problems. So that's why we are calling on our, on, on our authorities, especially the NAPCO, you know, that and the, uh, is the food and um, something, I've forgotten the, the, the team that the government is currently, you know, implementing. Planting for food. Yes, so that if they can also look, look at, because farmers, there are farmers in Ghana who are still producing tobacco products, mm. and when they produce their, their leaves, they transport them to other countries for the purpose of, you know, I mean, like Nigeria and that stuff for the purpose of growing this tobacco. So the point for us is we want government to channel its energy there and invite or bring, I mean, the, the program on board and let's see how we can support those farmers to shift from the production of, you know, I mean, tobacco growing. Because it, it also has its own effect in terms of, I mean, you know, um, working around it. Mm. You know, it has some diseases that the farmers themselves go through. Children are poor because, I mean, you have to work on the farm instead of going to school. You know, it comes with so many challenges. And then also, it doesn't fetch, you know. But the point is this. Many farmers complain that they don't have any alternative. That is why in the minds of farmers of the Framework Convention to Bar Control, WHO, they came up with guidelines on how government mm -hmm. should be able. And there are so many support, support programs, even globally. WHO has program that they can support government. Unfortunately, Ghana have not taken advantage of it. So as we mark the One Tobacco Day, we are calling on government to activate that session and then see how we can collaboratively work together to support our farmers. And this will go a long way to reduce, you know, the menis and then the disease that uh, you mentioned earlier, mm. uh, cancer, the cardiovascular diseases, right. hypertension and stuff that uh, we are faced with. When it comes so, to so how is it that in spite of, uh, I mean, toughened policies, we're not able to control this uh, tobacco use. Well, so you see, um, like I said, it's, it's, it's a legal product. The tobacco industry um, also have, you know, and for the lobbies, you, you, you imagine what happened in Parliament before we passed the, 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 the public, the, the, the excise duty bill, for instance. For me, I was appointed that uh, we have to go through voting for us to get a public, public health, I mean, aspect of our, you know, and the argument has been that this will protect our children from getting, you know, addicted to tobacco use and stuff. And we have to go through voting. In this terms of the court, there are lobby groups. There are the tobacco industry themselves are, are lobbying. They are, they are doing their own advocacy. We even have civil society organizations who front for the tobacco industry. As I speak to you, I would not be surprised if we also have counter, you know, civil society groups who are also promoting, you know, other aspects of tobacco products. And this is not good for, you know, for us. So the point is this, um, I know government is trying its best, but indeed the industry would not, would, would not sleep. They will also find means and ways of reducing the extent to which government will put, you know, tough or stringent measures to reduce the, you know, the, the effectiveness of tobacco control. Currently we have a law in Ghana, right. but the effectiveness has become um, not so much in terms of implementation. And while you make the effort at uh, tackling or controlling and possibly minimizing the use of tobacco, 
uh, there are those who are still living with the complications of it, uh, of its use, um, addiction, and, and all, all forms of uh, complication. Are you mindful of these sects of people who are still reeling at the, under the effects of tobacco use? Indeed, let me say that that even came out during the National Commission where um, the Ministry of Health was tasked to mm -hmm. ensure that at least um, they, um, they support, um, you know, the, the, the district hospitals, the psychiatric hospital, and hospital have been dedicated to support people who are suffering from, from addictive substances, for instance, tobacco use. So, they, for instance, Ghana passed um, a physician guideline in 2017, for instance, that has also seen not seen much of, of, of implementation. But the point is that then there are, you know, uh, facilities within um, various hospitals where people can be taken. But, but is it that high? I mean, the, the, just to, to, to make a case for why you're pushing for, for this no tobacco day. What, what you mean whether there's a case? Yeah, yeah, yes, no, no, in, indeed there's a case because, I mean, um, the GI will tell you that, uh, I mean, Ghana still imports millions of cigarette products in the country, and we, got, we get it consumed. So, and government is also getting much revenue. So it tells you what to call it. The problem that we are facing currently, and we are told by some, some, some doctors that every Friday, if you see the cases that go to the hospital in terms of hypertension, in terms of stroke, in terms of, and most of these, these, uh, these conditions that go to the hospital are as a result of these unhealthy commodities. And tobacco is number one. You know, because people are now abusing the product. It's very cheap in the market. You go to the market now, I mean, if you have 50 pesos, you can, you can buy a stick of cigarette to smoke. And now, you know, shisha. Shisha has not taken all over, you know, our youth. And that is the, the most dangerous, you know, aspect of it. But because shisha has not been there for a long time, we are not seeing that the, 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 the real effect. Mm. But trust me, we are calling for government to ban this product, including electronic cigarettes, that our youth are becoming so much obsessed with. And this is as a result of, you know, Advertisement. Advertisement on TV, radio has been banned, but unfortunately, social media is where it is. And then one other thing is that uh, our celebrities are also not helping the kids. You see most celebrities who are also smoking in public, are also using shisha in public. So the point is that what you tell your, your, your team, you support who are, who are following you, definitely they would want to emulate what their role models are doing. So we're also calling on, you know, on these celebrities to be mindful of the fact that for you, you have the money. If you get the cancers, the, the whatever, you can fly and get treatment. What happens to your team in youth? I mean, who are, who yeah, are, who are not? But there's also the com uh, commercial implication of this, a, a reason for which what you're looking for in the form of an outright ban may not come anytime soon. Well, for, yes, so, so the discussion has not begun. We call it the end game. Yes. Um, it, in fact, we don't see it to come very soon, mm -hmm. but we are actually... Uh, it, it's, it's unlikely that it may even well, come. Well, well, but, no, it, it, it would eventually get there. Are you, are you certain? Yeah, we are very certain that it will get there because a more awareness is creation is, is being, being created. created yes. Because even the, the tobacco industry, they are moving away from the traditional cigarettes, you know, like I told you, to more innovative stuff. And they call something harm reduction. But the point is that uh, we're, not, we're not talking about harm reduction. We want a tobacco-free society, a tobacco-free world, so that we can all live happily, you know, devoid of these diseases. So indeed, um, yes, for the end game, the conversation is, is, now, is now going on, but we want more stiffer, you know, regulations, laws. But the point is that uh, our policymakers, our governments will stand firm and resolute, you know, and don't listen to the industry. Because, like I mentioned earlier, a product that does not have any benefits, we don't have to entertain you know, such an entity at all, whether commercial or, or whatever, because they only look up for their interests, and not the interests of me and you, our children, and every other person. For some, you're simply attacking the product itself uh, when you could go after um, persons, approach the issue with some level of moral situation, tr trying to appeal uh, to, to these group of persons who are going for tobacco not to use them. Okay, so you see, the Freedom of Commercial Tobacco Control, you know, um, has given, in fact, it touched on every aspect. So there's a target for the industry, we are calling on the industry, exposing them of, of the fact that they claim mm -hmm. the product is not, is unwholesome. Yes. They claim, even they themselves have promised that they are going to stop the production of tobacco. But in the time we, we are getting closer, they, they shift their goalposts. You know, so the point that they have admitted that the product is very harmful and very deadly to our, to, our, to our health. That's why they're coming out with other, you know, alternatives. But even are, those are, are even more dangerous than the tobacco itself. And the fact that at the smokers or awareness creation is also ongoing on radio, on TV, raising awareness of the youth. And that is why I always say it's a concerted effort. Civil society, government, 
um, clinicians cannot do it alone. We need the media. We need our celebrity to support a healthy cause. I'm, I'm looking for a celebrity who will come and say, okay, fine, I am here and I now want to support the other cause, the cause, you know, to stop, I mean, our youth from, from, from smoking. But like I said, you rather find them rather smoking, you know, in public, I mean, glare. So if, if this happens, it will be difficult to reach, I mean, our, our goal of, you know, so the point is that we are targeting the, the, the industry. We are also ensuring that okay, we are monitoring government reactions, government action, just as we saw during the, you know, and the passage of the excise tax on tobacco, for instance, the whole world have seen, you know, what our policymakers are looking out for instead of um, public health gain. So the, the point is this. Um, yes, so there's naming and shaming, mm -hmm. which mostly civil society will do. We expose government, we expose the industry for unethical behavior. We also expose our own civil society organizations who, for whatever reason, support, you know, um, tobacco, um, you know, tobacco industry and their, their products. What's the way forward? The, the, the next set of activities we should be expecting from your coalition, uh, just to drum home the points that you've been making all these years. Right. So you see, public awareness is very key in whatever that we're doing. Unfortunately, because of the, the ban on drumming, and we're, only, we're not able to, you know, to, to have a kind of mass this thing. But um, together with FDA and civil society, we are planning to do, as I speak to you now, the commission is also done in other regions. So, all the region, regional capitals are also commemorating the World Tobacco Day. It's a form of raising awareness. So we have a program where, you know, throughout the year, it's going to be awareness creation, engaging people, engaging students. Indeed, today we had a, a, a quiz competition, you know, right. where students were involved. I mean, just to continue to raise awareness, give them understanding of, of the harm of this product and how practically we can, together with them, you know, reduce the, the, the menace of tobacco. How about the appeal that you jointly combat this uh, menace? And uh, the fact that you have uh, the youth also, also resorting to other forms of addiction, which is also drug use, by the way, aside tobacco. And the feeling is once you push them off tobacco, they may be moving to the alternative ones. Right, so, so it's, it's unfortunate. That, that's also a concern to you as well. Yeah, yeah indeed, it's a, it's a concern. That is why, uh, you know, when the Excise GT bill was passed, for instance, you know, it's included taxing, you know, electronic cigarettes. And in normal circumstances, electronic cigarettes are supposed to be used for cessation purposes. So that in the event that somebody, I mean, uh, wants to stop smoking, you know, the clinician or the doctor will prescribe. It's a prescriptive medicine, right? But now that it has been, you know, given the, the, the I mean, the fact that um, GRA can now begin to tax, then the industry will now have the opportunity to, to bring it. So yeah. we are even calling for, for amendment of that particular aspect, just so we can have um, is electronic cigarette, the new product that we are talking about, I mean, to still be, you know, be used as, you know, as a situation instead of for recreational purposes, right? So the point is, it, I mean, it's a big challenge for us. Shisha has come. There's no much regulation of opposition. Many countries have banned Shisha. But the point, the point for us really is it all boils down to our policymakers. You know, when our policymakers begin to understand that this is, is, is a disease that has befallen the world and Ghana, as many countries are putting so many measures, and they are reducing how call, the prevalence of, of smoking. Though smoking is not very high, but it's growing gradually. So the point for us is there are many countries that are doing very well. They are reducing the prevalence. Rwanda, Kenya, they have all banned shisha because they are seeing the, I mean, an epidemic before them. Yeah. Why can't we do the same? Labram, we need to go, uh, but, but let's not leave without talking about public smoking. It's also uh, a form of the challenge because, yes, I may decide not to use the product, but someone else's decision to use it could affect me in public. Right, so thank you very much indeed. I'm very happy about this. Um, I mean, let me use the opportunity to say that we have a public health act, and then part six is the tobacco control measures. And it also has a, a, a provision that, that states that require tobacco smoking, is, public smoking of tobacco is banned. So the point is that uh, smoking is banned in Ghana. I'm talking about public smoking. Oh, really? Yeah, it's banned in Ghana. You can't smoke in public. Yes. You can only smoke in a DSC or DS, your DSO, which is called Designated Smoking Room. Okay, so, so there should be a spot, so there should be an area yes. where, where you can do it. And that. this law was passed in 2012. Mm -hmm. And yet? And yet, so, you are, so, so, so that's the thing. I, I, I don't, I'm not sure if, if, you are, if you are aware or even your yeah. listeners are aware that, that the smoking is banned in Ghana. So anybody who smokes, you see someone smoking, he has violated the, 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 the laws of Ghana. But the point is this, if for instance, enjoy, I mean, your studio, for instance, there's a smoker who wants to smoke, it is incumbent on the management, you know, to then, you know, come out with a structure, 
mm. where the person can go and smoke so that at least it doesn't affect me and you yeah. who have said not to smoke because S certainly not close to the to, to the newsroom yeah yeah <laughs> definitely not close to the newsroom not to the newsroom and the point is i see yes. if, if even when the law was being was being done we we we, we told government i see there's no way you can keep smoke intact smoke cannot be there's no mechanism that can keep smoke mm. smoking will definitely come that's when you go to some some facilities in the country for instance there are many facilities that have the necessary smoking room I, can, I don't want to mention the hotels, yeah. but the point is this, they have smoking rooms, but they are violating the rule because they're not able to, once you open the door, they're supposed to come inside. Yeah. You understand? So you are still affecting people who, who wish to sit. And inhaling that, according to research, is even more dangerous than, than actual smoking. Well, well, so you see, um, well, so I will not dispute that yes. because yes. once you puff it out, there's yes. a chemical that it, it comes in contact before you inhale it. Yes. But the, the, the point really for, for us is mm -hmm. tobacco kills, you know, 8 million people right. annually, where secondhand smoking also kills about 600,000 people annually. Right. So the point is that whether you so are it's inhaling, also a significant figure. Yeah, it's a significant distance. That's why we, we call it, that's why we call it on parent especially because the law did not go into the homes of people. Fine, there's ban of smoking public places. So the argument is, so is my home a public place? If a husband starts to smoke question. and there's a woman, there are children, mm -hmm. what becomes of that? Because then it becomes like domestic violence bill. The point is the woman can, or the man can choose to report the, the husband or whoever of smoking, but the point is, will, will you be able to stand the other call the, the, the replication yeah. or let's say imprisonment or finding your husband so then it becomes you know number. so the point is it's about creating awareness getting children to understand also tell talk to their parents that indeed this is a nuisance to me because right. as you smoke you are affecting your your, your child even the unborn baby if your wife is pregnant uh Lebron, we need to have this conversation once more but certainly we've run out of time thank you uh, for spending some time with us here on Thank the Thank you very much for having me. And I uh, wish you the very best, hoping that you'll be able to get government to do their needful. Uh, 